All right, guys, we just made it to Joe's house, a.k.a. Tusi Coros. How are you, Joe? Nice to meet you, man. Thank you for coming over. Oh, thank you for yeah. having us over, man. You're um, kidding me? Uh, I hear nothing but good things about know, your tank. I've, uh, I don't listen to everybody. <laughs> so let's dive into your tank, man, seriously. Uh, so a couple questions. How long has this tank been set up? This was set up in 2008 um, as so a soft, years. yeah, as a softy tank. Okay. So the reason why you see it, it's a closed loop system is because when I built it, I didn't want to see power heads power as head. you're seeing. And then I got the SPS bug as everybody else does. And that's why everything changed. So your SPS um, dominated, that's for sure. Yeah, right. So um, yeah, it's about 15 years. It was a custom tank built by Acrylic glass exhibits in uh, Texas. AGE. AGE. Don't forget, throughout this video, we're gonna hide an egg of Casper somewhere. I can't tell you where it's gonna be. First three people to post a comment on YouTube. Very clear. First three people to post a comment on YouTube where they found the fish will mail you a t shirt right to your door. Go hunting right now. Go find them. What is the dimensions of the tank? It's about 60 by 24, I believe, or maybe 22 deep. Um, so how many gallons is it roughly? It's about 180. 180? Yeah. Okay. And a couple more questions. So you say you have a closed loop. So you know as a reefer one of the hardest things to achieve is flow. Oh. And obviously I can tell that you use your own techniques, which I kind of like it. One of them is, has nothing to do with flow, but earlier, I don't know if you guys can see here on camera, but he's got two metal highlights. We're going to get into it. I just I did a little sneaking before the video. So I say, hey Joe, one of your male highlights is off, the other one's on, is everything okay? He goes, yeah, that's totally normal. The light comes on here on the left, then the other one comes on, the, there's stronger towards the middle, then this one was off. So it, it kind of like mimics what the sun does, just right. travel through the whole tank. So because, I think it's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, because what, what is the brightest and hottest part of the day? Is around two o'clock? Two o'clock, 12 right. to two. So that's thing. when the sun is directly on top. That's when you so got the two meeting. That's when you have the two of them meeting. You're completely out of room here. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your plan? Because obviously, for instance, let's just, if we look yeah. at this specific spot, we got <laughs> one, two, three, four, five acropores yeah. we're talking about in a space like this. And the middle one is winning already. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you deal with the, with the little space? Are you planning on removing some? Uh, you need to make trimming? more reef paloozas, Victor, so we there can you make see, more you can shells, get rid of more so we can get rid of more. <laughs> Everyone says that, but four of them is enough already, man. It's a little much, um, you know? I mean, I either donate it or, um, you know, help others, you know, other reefers that don't have and clip and this, because there's so much I can keep in my grow up. So you got to be constantly trimming because yeah. of the size of the yeah. tank and the amount of corals so that you So in have. some cases, I allow them to go and they kind of they like, learn, they learn how they dance, learn how, I call it. They learn how to avoid each other. Also, another thing that I try to do is I try to, to get same type species of corals that I know if they get too close or touch. They're a little less gonna, aggressive towards each other. Right. It's, it's difficult, it's definitely good. a challenge. I mean, this tank, I redid this tank um, in November. Yeah. And. What do you mean by redo it? What do you what you do? Basically, do? I uh, I almost lost the tank in November because I went to Europe. My father was sick and my freaking chiller broke down. Wow, when you were gone. And the temperature rose and corals were stressed because when I was gone, nutrient levels and the, everything changed and um, I lost a lot of big colonies all at once. Gotcha. You know, but uh, I said, you know what? It's time to redo it. It's time it to anyway. redo it again. So I took everything out. I left the the the, the heart, the body of the rocks and everything, and replanted. I love the aquascape, by the way. Yeah, thank you. And um, and I replanted all these cars. These cars were mostly frags. Fast growth. It it grows it, it, because if you if you maintain it like I do, um, which is not hard to do. It's just discipline. Um, it's the stability, right? Yeah. That's the key. Stability and. Um, there's no my way better your, than yours is stability. Oh, so, so whatever like numbers. Cooking. It's like cooking, right? Yeah. Whatever numbers you choose to stick with, just stick with them. I tell that to you people know. all the time. So if you guys can pay attention at home, a lot of times you can have horrible nitrates, let's say 40. You can have your salinity at 21. Your temperature can be 81. Your alkalinity could be 10. None of the numbers kind of make sense. They're not too far off. 
But if your calls are telling you they're happy because that's what they got used to, leave it alone. Too many people right. come to us and they say, hey, my salinity is 21. <gasps> what should it be? 25. And guess what they do? They run home, they mix salt, and they raise the salinity. And these calls are going to get yeah. shot. Yeah. So there's always the key stability. You, you don't want to be chasing numbers. Of course, you want to... You want to get the right numbers, calcium 450 yeah. or so. You'll be in the range. Yeah, calcium yeah, 8 to 9 know. or so, whatever. We all, we all get our parameters, but you can't get too out of whack. You yeah. start chasing numbers, you're going to fail. Yeah, you're, you're going to do it to yourself. And uh, to me, it's like, like we're saying, like you're saying, find the, the comfort zone. The problem is that we have forums, we have me, you know, social media now. It's, you know, and it's like I, I get people reaching out to me. It's like, what's the trick? What do you there is there no, is trick. no trick. The, 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 there is a trick, and I'm going to tell you what the trick is. Don't listen to too many sources of information. Pick a person. I don't care if it's Joe, if it's me, if it's the next fish store over, if it's your neighbor. I really, we really don't care. Just when you go around gathering too much information, you gather information from your fish store, you gather information from the person that's guiding you, you gather information from the forums, you gather information from YouTube, and next thing you know, you put it together and you don't realize why it's not working because you're coming out with your own conclusions and your own assumptions on what's going right. to work. I want to ask you a couple of maintenance questions. What are changes? I try not to do them. Okay. Especially oh. in the summertime. Why is that? Because Why I will, in the summer? Because in the summertime, what do we do? We're watering our lawns, we're throwing fertilizers, we're throwing insecticides, we're throwing all kinds of stuff. So now, where is your water coming from? Gotcha. Is it well water? Is it rain water? So it's dirtier um, water in the where summertime I live where you say more is, chemicals. Is well water. So all of that chemicals are going to the water table and then the, Gotcha. The, so that's the reason for the summer. So I don't believe that the RO is gonna remove can clean everything. It's not know? easy. And where when do you have mostly RTN and STN the most? Is in the summertime. Huh, interesting. Okay, because I believe is the water changes, nothing else. Gotcha. So every every time I stop doing water changes, mainly in the summertime, Everything I lost less colors. So when yeah. you do water changes, if you do, how, how big do you do them? I do about 30 gallons. How often? Um, in the summertime, I try to do them like every two months. And off you time, know. once a month? I used to do them once a week and I stopped and I saw better results. So then I started like maybe once a month. Okay, um, cool. You know. How about food for the fish? What do you feed in the, the, the corals, the fish in general? Um, I don't feed the corals. I only okay. feed the fish, which is a mixture of like mice, all frozen foods. I don't do pellets. Okay, I don't either. You know, only frozen. Actually, I'm lying. We got yeah. those new Nutrimar. pellets. We got those new um, Nutrimar's call? Yeah. yeah. Me and Lou been feeding these Nutrimar pellets, and we love them. They're like, um, Quality Marine makes them. Okay. And I've never been a pallet guy, and these are specific pallets, you actually get to like, you can throw them as pallets, so if you smush them in your finger, it becomes coral food. Wow. And I'm not even kidding you, we've been using for a long now, you say, look, three, four months, and I'm in love with them. I mean, I still feed my frozen, and my... Yeah, I only, do my I, I only do, you know, like mice, brine, you know, spirulina, and then, you know, I do some squid, some this, you know, for, you know. Gotcha. Um, and... How about you have a calcium reactor? You do an A and B cogwasser. It's I have calcium reactor, okay. um, which is not large enough. It's supposed to, to be large, they, you know, for the gallons. But gotcha. you know, they, I don't know why it's they go. It's a lot go. of consumption in there. It's, it's a, a lot of consumption. So, you know, I'm dosing from that about 90 mL per minute okay. right now. Um, and your nitrous and phosphates. Where do you try to keep those? I'd like, uh, the, the, the happy medium with that is 100 to 1. Okay. What do you mean 100 to 1? So it's, if, let's say you want 5 ppm of nitrates, you should be at 0 0.05 in five states. Gotcha. So that's where I like, that's the happy medium. Right now... So 5-ish, 10? That's what you're I like around 5. Okay. And um, fish, I see you have a black tank. I love that fish, by the way. I have, uh, yeah, black that's, tank. Uh, that was during the time where you could not buy a black tank. Um, <laughs> is that a Lenardi rice? Yeah, that's a Lenardi. I Gorgeous have, fish. Not an easy know. fish to keep alive, believe it or not. They, it's they tough. Kind of that fish is tough. I, I, I spend a lot of money buying those fish. And what I don't know 
where I was failing, if I was failing, is because I had a three foot bob at Worm in this tank. Oh wow, three foot. Three foot. So can you tell me some of the fish that are in this tank? Yeah, I mean I have a femininas in here. Okay. That's a early early ras, okay. baby one. Um, you know the Ramboids. This is a female Jansani. Okay. Um, that's believe it or not a rare male which haven't turned into a full male, Bell's Ras. Okay. Um, these are the Hachis, Antias, oh, which beautiful. some people call them green Antias. I love them. Um, love them, love them. Uh, this is the male Jonsani. I see the copper man there keeping you know. the Aptasia away. Um, yeah, he keeps the Aptasia. And then I have the Filefish, which I always struggled with Mijanos. Gotcha. You know. And I'm lucky that this guy does not touch anything else because he cleaned the Who tank. Who does? The, the file fish. Where is he? Uh, he's, oh, I see he's, him over there. I just you know, realized you got an Aptasia eating file yeah, fish. He, um, you are crazy. He he's are, not eating your SPS. Yeah, he's not touching the SPSs. He's not? Because I've had ones before where as soon as he cleans the tank, I got to pull him out. Wow. Wow, it looks more grown from this side. <laughs> yeah, it's uh... The tank looks a lot more grown from this side. Can we see the filtration? Sure, of course. So basically, it's a simple filtration system, as you can see. Um, I have a GHL, the first GHL that entered in America, because basically... Okay. Um, um, so you're dosing... I'm dosing, right now, magnesium. Okay. Um, trace elements and some nopox. Okay. Um, I control my nutrients with the algae reactor, little nopox, and also the Tropic Marine Bacto Balance. That's cool. Um, I have never seen a device like this. This is I pretty, had uh, PM pretty creative. Precision, precision yeah, Marine build that for me. I told them what I wanted and they, they, they couldn't believe. I like it. Very you know, creative. So, um, so uh, but it, like you say, it's a simple thing. How often you run your protein skimmer? All the time. All the time? Yeah. Do you ever turn it off? No. No? And what are you running here? That's basically denitrate. Uh, it needs to be cleaned. Like a denitrator? Yeah, denitrator, but I don't replace it. I allow it for more bacteria to build in okay. there. And I see you got a cold view calcium reactor back there. Is that what I see or something um, else? Yeah, it's... Um, I think it's, it's a Vertex, which is the same type um, calcium reactor, and then the... The Pax Bellum, which yeah. is maybe like a refugium type of thing? Right, it grows that algae. And like a modern refugium, basically. Yeah, exactly. The light you know, goes in. So I, I have it on six hours during the day, six hours at night. So this way it helps also with the pH. And how often do you have to get it out to when it's too much growing? I mean, this was empty a week ago. So and once a week or yeah. so you have to empty it? I, uh, I, don't, I don't like to empty it too much and i tell you why. Because when you empty it, it strips your water again. Gotcha. You know, the problems I always had was when I was doing ROA, is that when you replace the media, you know, it attacks the, the, the water and strips it and corals don't like it. So then I started only replacing half of the media, not all of it. And, um, and then I felt like I was doing it more too often because it, so I got tired of it and that's when I switched to this. But when I, when I allow this to grow, I change it, change a little bit, pull only a little bit, not the whole thing, just only a little gotcha. bit. Just to keep when it starts getting gooky, gooky and stuff. Gotcha. Um, then I, I mean, as you see, space is limited. So then I have also for testing, I have up here, you know, my... Uh, this is your cluster, basically, your roofing cluster. Right. Are you and, using and the trident? Also, yeah, the trident, and I am also using a Kalkwasser. How often the know, trident takes to your alkalinity for? Um, every six hours. Every six hours? Right. Okay, how often do you have to uh, calibrate it? I only calibrate it when I change the, uh, the bottles. Which is how often? Um, every month. Okay, not know. bad. It's not bad. And, okay. um, and then the chiller sits outside where I had to plumb this tank all the way around. And that's basically what keeps my tank the temperature. Because I do believe temperature is important to stay yeah. steady. Especially, For sure. especially in the summertime. 
Yes. You know, and um, it's a big one. If the, the ocean doesn't know, fluctuate that much, you know, know, not much, you know. No. Um, um, yeah, and with metal highlights, you you will definitely cook everything. Since we're talking about metal highlights, can we look in sure. the lighting? Sure, of course. Um, so let me see what you have here. So you have two two fifties. These are yes. The, I, I could run four hundreds, but right now I'm running the two fifties. Okay, what ballast um, are you using? The electronic ballast. Who, who makes them? Um, are they the green ones? The green ones. Galaxy Ballast. Galaxy Ballast, yeah. I've been doing this for yeah. a while too. Yeah. I still remember a little bit yeah. of, of metal highlights. I yeah. haven't lost my touch yet, guys. Um, and you say you're running um, the, radium the, bulbs? Radium bulbs. So I asked him, I say, how are you sourcing the bulbs? He goes, I got plenty. By the time <laughs> I run out, I'll be somewhere else, he says. <laughs> so smart man. There's still some people love metal highlights. Tell you the truth, metal highlights still one of my favorite lights. I just don't like the consumption of electricity and the heat that they yes. produce. But the coloration, it's just, it's, it's hard to match. It really yeah. is, man. Look, it's expensive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this tank is costing me an electric at least 500 a month. I'm sure. You know, between lighting, pumps. Uh, yeah. Which, I got the mixing station. The heat, the chiller. Uh, the chiller. I got a mixing station over there. But it's what you like. It makes uh, you happy, right? You know what? That's what I, um, that's what I live for. Cool. Um, uh, you know, and... Um, you know, and then I have those. You got T5s and some LED LED LEDs, strips as well. You know, okay. You know, so uh, basically, it the lights come on at ten in the morning. Ha the first halide come on at noon. The second one comes on at two. Yeah. The first one comes off at three, so they're on together for two hours. Got gotcha. you. That's the and middle of the, the day. That's one. the twelve to two. So this is about to come off. Got gotcha. you. You know. Cool. And, um, so one more. I thought this was the only flow that you have besides your closed loop, and I see here no, on this there side. there's two there, another one on the two, other what are side. Two of these, Jebaos or Tonsies? Tonsies. Tonsies? Yeah. And that's two of them? That's two here, one on the other side. Wow, so you um, have a lot of flow in here. You know, and then I have a, a reflow pump, which is back there in the corner. That's what's doing the closed loop. Cool. And then, also, you have your chiller pump. Oh, yeah. Last but not least, <laughs> this is your frag tank? This is my frag tank. It looks like a pretty big frag tank, you if know, you ask me, buddy. Um, um, you know, I got to clean it up because we didn't have time last night. We came here. It's all right. The cores look very healthy, though. You know. That's a beautiful acupora right there. That's a jaw dropper. Jaw dropper? Um, beautiful. Yeah. I had to actually frag at night when I came home Saturday not because I sold them all. You know, it, it, it's a nice therapy and it's a challenge. Oh, know? definitely. It keeps you busy, it right? It keeps you busy, you know, and I always want to improve, and, and that's how we learn, you know. Um, but I die for this thing. Well, it shows, you know? it shows, Joe. And, Beautiful uh, tank, man, you know. You know? Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, All right, uh, buddy. Well, thank you for inviting uh, us over, man. I'll tell you what, next year when I come to Riffapalooza, I'll, I'll love to come over and just see an update of the tank, you know? Yeah, I, listen, you're welcome anytime you want. <laughs> guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. We'll see you guys in the next episode. We're still not done for today. We're going to film a couple more times. We'll see you guys soon.